Part drawings must communicate the design of a part thoroughly. If a part is not fully dimensioned, anyone following the drawing to manufacture the part would not have sufficient information to replicate it without any differences. For example, if the location of the holes of a bracket is not dimensioned, there is an infinite number of possible brackets that have the same size and hole diameters, only with different locations for the holes. Before software packages like SolidWorks were readily available, part drawings were actually sketched by engineers and graphic design courses focused on teaching proper techniques for accurate orthogonal and isometric views of a part. Of course, most of those concepts are less valuable these days, except for the ones that are still essential to understand CAT software, which we will cover here today. In the next 8 minute long lectures, adding up to around only 4 hours total, we will learn how to use SOLIDWORKS for creating a 3D part from drawings, create properly dimensioned drawings from a part, use assemblies, renders, animation and motion, and other tools that SOLIDWORKS offers, like creating threaded holes and threaded parts and using motor controls. So let's start by looking at a simple 3D parts isometric view. Part drawings of simple parts usually include three out of the six principal orthogonal views, and we call them front view, top view, and side view. However, we will learn that even more complex parts can be fully described with only one of these together with one or more auxiliary or section views. But we'll talk about those later. Link below if you want to learn about auxiliary and section views in SOLIDWORKS. Looking at the isometric view of this part, we can learn about some of the basic characteristics of orthogonal views. The names that correspond to front, side, and top views can be interchangeable but once set, they have to be kept as they are for consistency. Let's say that this first view is the front view. A person standing in front of the front view would see this plane, the triangle in the back, and the quarter of a circle, all of them without any depth information. Additionally, our orthogonal planes can include what we call hidden features. In this case, if the 3D part is transparent, a person looking at it from the front would see the vertical hole. These hidden features are usually represented with dashed or dotted lines. The same is true for the horizontal hole. Center lines of circular holes are usually included as well. If we do the same with a person looking at our part from the right side, this person would see one rectangle at the bottom, a more narrow rectangle just on top of that, the curved surface with a hole on top of those, and from that perspective, the slanted surface would look like another rectangle. If the object was transparent again, they would also see the outline of the horizontal hole and the outline of the vertical hole, shown as hidden features in dashed lines. Finally, from the top, a person would see a rectangle with a hole, the same slanted surface as a rectangle, a third rectangle, and just like the slanted surface, the curved surface, without any depth information in this 2D view, would look like another rectangle. They would see the outline of the first hole as two horizontal lines, and the outline of the second hole as two vertical lines. One important characteristic of these orthogonal views is that they are lined up so that all features coincide. For example, the lines of the hole in the middle are aligned. Or if you look at the bottom left corner, you'll see that it's aligned in all the views, the top, front, and side views, just like everything else. Now, this process of sketching the orthogonal views is also somewhat outdated, since the CAD software you'll be using will be able to do this automatically. Specifically for SOLIDWORKS, we will learn how to take a 3D part file and make drawings from them. Links below if you want to check that now. For now, what we can do is look at this 3D render and rotate it to look at the front view and make sure that our sketch is indeed correct, and it is. Now the side view, we compare it to our sketch, and it looks good. And finally the top view, and compare it once again. Now the opposite process is also very important. Let's say you already have the part drawings, and you're trying to sketch the isometric view to have a better idea of what your part would look like in real life. In that old age, they used to use a thing called isometric grid paper. The lines would be separated by 60 degrees so that each orthogonal axis was 120 degrees away from each other. 
you would take each one of the orthogonal views and sketch it on each one of the orthogonal imaginary planes. You would take the front view and sketch it, then the side view and do the same, and then the top view and sketch it as well. Then you would move back the lines that needed to be moved by erasing the existing lines and drawing them where they would match the different views, and the result would be the 3D isometric view of your part. But again, this process is no longer needed. With software like SolidWorks, you would just use the drawings to make sketches in a 3D environment to finally create an actual 3D part file. And this is exactly what we'll begin with in the next few series of videos. Links below to the next 8 minute lecture and all the subsequent ones. The bigger picture of this course is we'll learn how to take drawings and make parts based off of them. We'll look at how to use basic extrusions, smart dimensions, assign materials, use reference geometries, and everything you need to create all kinds of 3D parts. Then we will do the opposite. From a fully created 3D part, we will make accurate and fully dimensioned part drawings. This will include auxiliary and section views, not just the orthogonal views we covered here today. We will then learn about assemblies and how to use parts to put together a more complex system that is capable of moving and interacting with other parts or sub-assemblies. This will include how to use the rendering function of SolidWorks to make things look more realistic as well as animating the motion or operation of your machine. Finally, the last part of this course will touch on how to use the stress analysis feature of SOLIDWORKS, which, to be fair, is not as accurate as other finite element analysis software out there, but under specific conditions, it's reasonable enough to use it and we'll learn about when and when not to use it. It's still very easy to use and you don't need an unreasonably powerful rig to run it, so it's a good first pass at any structural analysis you want to perform on your design. The links to each one of these topics will be found in the description below, so make sure to check those out. The link to the next video in this bigger series of videos is also found in the description, so make sure to follow that one for the next lecture. Thanks for watching.